Hey everyone, Johnny here. In this video, we'll be looking at the Attribute Sample Texture node in the Geometry Nodes Editor. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you find it helpful. You can also follow me on Twitter at Johnny Gizmo. Now you'll need to be running the current version of Blender 2.93 Using a similar technique to one of my previous videos about creating a woodblock sound diffuser with geometry nodes, I've made a grid of blocks whose height is controlled by an attribute randomized node. In the last video, I created an 11 by 11 grid to get the look I was going for. In this example, I created a 50 by 50 grid so we could see a lot more detail. Now, in this video, we want our grid to be a pattern rather than just random heights. And to do this, we're going to use the Attribute Sample Texture node. So first, let's create a new texture that we can use. If you go to the Texture Properties tab and click the New button, you'll create an empty texture. Go ahead and change the type to Wood. Now you can actually use just about any texture for this. Be creative. Dial up some settings that look good but I would suggest going with a larger size pattern to start with until you see how it works with your cubes. Now back in our geometry nodes, we can see our attribute randomized node is creating a height of one to five and putting that in a new attribute called height. We are rounding that height off to the nearest integer, then combining that with an X and Y value of one and replacing the scale value of our points to that new vector. That gives us the random height for our blocks. So let's create an attribute sample texture node to replace our attribute randomized node with. I'll hit Shift A, Attribute, Attribute Sample Texture. In the texture dropdown, select the texture that we just created. Go ahead and plug in our original geometry from our group input into the geometry of our new node. The mapping socket needs to point to a UV map. If you created your object with a grid, it will have a UV map automatically created with it. However, if your object doesn't have a UV map for some reason, or the map is messed up, you may want to recreate it. So to do that, Go into edit mode on your object, go to the object data properties tab, expand the UV maps section, go ahead and delete the existing UV map, and with all of our vertices selected, I'm going to press U to unwrap, and then choose the first unwrap method. You'll see by doing this, a new UV map is created called UV map. So let's go ahead and put the name UV map in the mapping input. And then we want to put what attribute will receive this new information. So I'm going to use the same attribute that I've been using before called height. Now if we circumvent the attribute randomize node at this point, you will get some results. However, you may notice that the blocks are nowhere near as tall as they used to be and some of them are completely flat. This isn't what we want. One of the reasons they're different is because when we were using the randomized node, we set the minimum to one and the maximum to five. It was scaling up the values between these for us. The attribute sample texture is creating values from zero to one. So then when we apply the rounding to that, we are ending up with values of zero or one. And while yes, we are getting a texture, it's not very interesting. So we're going to need to amplify the texture to make it get values as high as the randomized node was creating. So let's add an attribute math node to multiply the height texture by five. We'll set the operation to multiply. The A operand will be our height. The B operand will be a float, and we'll set that to 5. We'll put the result back into the height attribute. Since we were getting values between 0 and 1 before the rounding, we're now getting values between 0 and 5, and then they're being rounded. 
However, we're still left with some of our blocks having a zero height. We could get around this by adding another attribute math node, setting the A operand to height, the B operand to float and a value of one and putting that back in height. So now the zero to five results are one to six. However, there is an easier way to do this. I'm gonna get rid of this attribute math node. I'm gonna change the operator type of our previous multiply to multiply add. The multiply add operator multiplies the A and B operands and then adds the C. So we get the power of those two nodes in one. So here I can just put in C as a float with a value of one. Still though, since the multiply was multiplying a value of zero to one and that was becoming zero to five, this is now one to six. So I'm gonna wanna change my B value here to four. The zero to one value of the texture becomes zero to four and then adding in the one, we get values of one to five. And if we look at our results, we're getting what we expected. Now that we have some results, let's go back to our texture node and play with that a bit to see what other sorts of results we could get. This is starting to look more like a Minecraft world every moment. You can of course use an attribute created by the sample texture node for anything that takes an attribute in texture nodes. So just try it out for stuff. Plug it into rotations, locations, scales, plug it into any of these sockets that take an attribute. It's a great way to find some cool effects and maybe stumble across something you otherwise would have missed. Now as a final note, we can also use an image to drive our textures. Coming back to the type, if I select image or movie and then open a file, we can have the color data of that image affect the height sampled by our attribute sample texture node. Grayscale images are probably a bit easier to understand how they're going to affect your blocks since they work with values from zero to one and the closer the resolution of your image matches your geometry you're trying to affect will also translate the image better. So go ahead and load up some files and see what kind of results you can come up with. I hope you've enjoyed this short video about how you can use the attribute sample texture node to bring patterns or images into the attributes of your geometry node trees. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit like. And if you're finding the content of this channel helpful, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.